Okay, I got a new lens for you. Kind of, sort of, but yes. It's all about capabilities and it's definitely a new lens. It's right here on the Nikon D500. It's certainly not this lens. Um, took a little recommendation from Steve Perry, who's been using the TC14E teleconverter. It's a 1.4 teleconverter, rather inexpensive little beast. I'm really strongly against teleconverters, even though I own six of them. And I've always said specifically that I don't recommend a teleconverter for anything other than a huge ass prime lens, which this is a 300 millimeter f/4 with the TCE4 TC14E teleconverter, which is a 1.4, which brings us up to 420 millimeters, brings it to an f/5.6, which is what this is, so 200 to 500 Nikkor. So let's talk about a couple of things here first, and then I'll talk about why this little setup is so special. And I was even asking uh, Steve Perry's recommendation on this teleconverter. I always knew that one of the last lenses, and this is the last Nikkor lens that I wanted to acquire. The reason why it's the very last is not that I didn't think very dearly of the 300mm f4 phase Fresnel. It's that it's a boutique lens, and he and I both agree that the lens is definitely overpriced for what it is. I mean, both of these lenses are made in China. It's ridiculous for this lens to cost $1,400 and this lens to cost uh, $2,000. The phase Fresnel element in their production costs only about a hundred dollars more for Nikon to produce. Okay, so what are we looking at? 26 ounces plus 7 ounces, so on this we have 33 ounces total. Okay, and we have 16 elements on the 300mm f4 and 7 elements on uh, the uh, TC14E Mark III version, by the way teleconverter. So we have 23 elements. This is basically what most 70 to 200 2.8 lenses are from Tamron and Nikon. They're basically all around 22 to 24 elements. So no different there. I mean the rendition, I told you there's two different ways to get the shot. I mean if you can have absolute control over rendition, that's wonderful. You know, obviously, what would be a better choice than this? Well, like a 400 millimeter f 2.8 would be a better choice than this. If we, yeah, but that's a big ass, not only insanely expensive lens, it is a huge honking nut buster. This is you can let this dangle off your camera all day long. 200 millimeter, 500 millimeter, 74 ounces. Okay, 33 ounces at 420 millimeters, also 5.6, also 5.6. 200 to 574 ounces. So. <sighs> Oh my goodness, that's what? That's 8 ounces more than double. So you take this lens times 2 and you still have to tack on an extra 8 ounces to meet the 200 to 500 at 19 elements. Yeah, okay. Now, by the way, I wanted the ultimate lightweight sports lens. And, you know, teleconverters cause an issue with uh, rendering. But at what this is, at... Uh, 16 elements already. I mean, it's not the ideal prime lens that I choose. I mean, I grabbed my 300 millimeter 2.8. If I wanted a 300 millimeter lens with perfect bokeh or near perfect bokeh um, with compression, I would choose one of my 300 millimeter 2.8s. But what if, from the premise, and I'm not really a wildlife shooter, I, I do love birds a lot. I do love to go out and shoot birds a lot. And I can think of no other person better on YouTube who had uh, recently made a video about this, than Steve Perry. So yes, I'm actually referencing a lens recommendation, in this case, the teleconverter. I knew all about the 300mm phase Fresnel as far as that it was going to be the very last Nikkor lens that I wanted to acquire, and I have acquired it. Here it is. Ha 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 ha! So, but he's dragged his crotch, and that's not an insult, that's a compliment. This guy's literally, as a real photographer, or a real wildlife photographer, the dude's dragged his crotch in the dirt to get the amazing wildlife photos, and I'll take his advice on the uh, TC14E teleconverter and uh, even asked him that question. You know, I got plenty of teleconverters, but none that would match the speed, be able to keep up with the speed and the vibration reduction of the 300mm uh, phase Fresnel F4 here. So you can see it right here sandwiched between the camera and the lens, or right here. It's about one inch in size. Rather expensive. $2,000 for the lens, $500 for the teleconverter. How do you like that little Nikon sticker? It's a vinyl decal. My buddy made. I guess I can call him my buddy. If you want to know who made this, these Nikon vinyl stickers, let me know. I'll give you a link. No, I don't get any kickbacks. Um, 
I wanted something, and there is no other Nikkor lens that matches this. I mean, this this doesn't really weigh anything. The 300 mm f4 alone doesn't really weigh anything. Adding this little dinky 1.4 teleconverter doesn't really add anything either. It adds more glass, to be certain, but it only adds another 7 ounces. So a total weight of 26 ounces plus 7 ounces, so 33 ounces. This is nothing. This is 420 millimeters at f5.6. Which, by the way, you think, well, 5.6 is not a very fast lens. Well, let me tell you what, brother man, that combined with the amazing insane high ISO capabilities of the Nikon D500, I just got done, I, I've been testing this for the past couple days. I shoot where I basically can't even see what it is I'm shooting at 20,000 ISO, handheld with a vibration reduction on this at shutter speeds of 1 20th of a second. And, you know, from a far distance, the barcodes that I was actually shooting is just, t I was testing this indoors and outdoors, but I was shooting barcodes and basically, I, I really couldn't even see basically what I was pointing at. I mean, I could, but basically not. But I mean, they were so perfectly resolved on this lens combo. I know you can't see this, but this is at 20,000 ISO and 1 15th of a second. You probably can't see that. But that barcode, I could stick a barcode scanner up to the back of this LCD screen and scan it perfectly fine. So amazing. If someone were a private eye, or, and I'm not a spy, <laughs> all right, said the guy who speaks Russian. If someone said, I want the ultimate lightweight spy lens that I could like hang out of my car, has to be super fast, has to have vibration reduction, but it can't look like I'm sticking a cannon out of the side of my car. And that's also really important for lightweight sports and action and travel photography, especially wildlife photography, which is what Steve Perry is using it for. There is nothing else other than this. There's nothing in the Nikon lineup that exists like this. I mean, name something else as 420 millimeters at f5.6 that is insanely lightweight. I mean, I could let this dangle off the uh, mount on my Nikon D500 and not worry about mount stress. We're only looking at 33 ounces here. This is nothing. This is it. So, I mean, as so far as, you know, I know me I know me some Nikon lenses. The one thing I was worried about, which is why I actually consulted with Steve Perry. And, hey, Steve Perry, what's up? I said, you know, you got a lot of experience. i got a lot of teleconverters, but none that are going to match up with the uh, capabilities of this lens. And I don't know, so I'm asking you. And he said, yeah, it keeps right up there with it. And so I ordered it uh, several days ago. It is a $500 teleconverter. <laughs> Um, but it does give you, uh, I can basically only see maybe, maybe, and the 300 millimeter f4 is insanely fast, autofocus, there's a difference between tracking and acquisition, by the way, autofocus acquisition is insanely fast, I really can't really tell a difference in autofocus acquisition, now I can because now it's an f5.6, I mean that I can tell, but given sufficient light, I can't tell that the autofocus acquisition and tracking is any slower with this teleconverter. Also the full vibration reduction is present with this lens and teleconverter combination. However, you are also looking at $2,000 for the lens and $500, so this, this one lens now, including the teleconverter if you want to call it one lens, is $2,500. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of money, right? That's about $500 more than this damn camera costs. But there is nothing else like this. I mean, that I can sit there and do handheld 420 millimeters at f5.6, crazy ISO, amazing vibration reduction. I know it's got flat rendering, but there's two different types of photography. There's a photography, and now it comes to lenses, obviously. You'd want the best rendering possible. But if you miss the shot, who gives a shit how good the rendering is? I mean, you're not going to sit there with a manual focus. It's like, well, this manual focus low element count prime lens is the best rendering. It's like, yeah, it does, but it can't be tracking, you know, squirrels on crack. It can't be tracking, you know, little Billy Bob who's been eating uh, sugar-coated Cheerios going around, uh, you know, the diamond to the baseball park. You know, you can't do that shit. So the question then becomes is what do you choose that gets the shot? You got to tweak it later in Lightroom, fine. At least you got the shot. It's like, well, you know, I had a hit rate of only 5% using the best rendering lens. 
Well, this lens doesn't render the best, but it's perfectly fine enough, but it's got, you know, I, whereas you had a 5% hit rate with the best rendering lens, I had a 95% hit rate with this lens, which may not render as well, which definitely does not render as well. Not to say there's anything shabby about it, but the teleconverter on here is no different than most typical 70 to 200 millimeter uh, 2.8 zoom lenses anyway. Those are all 23 element count, 20 to 24 element count. Uh, zoom lenses anyway. So this is it. So I got some amazing reach with this TC14E. It doesn't hamper the vibration reduction. It doesn't hamper the autofocus uh, tracking or uh, specifically the acquisition most importantly. Not that I could tell of two days of testing with it. And so to me this is the fucking tits. Excuse my language. This is the tits. This is it. There's nothing else that I could buy at any amount of money that is this, you know, that I can dangle off the hank of the camera, you know, traipse through the woods, reach, reach the hell out and touch something. If I want to stand on the sidelines of a sports action game or, you know, reach out and touch a bird or a creature or say I was a private eye. If I was a private eye with unlimited funds, it's like... You know, I gotta take uh, pictures of uh, Jim Bob cheating on his wife. You know, <laughs> it's like what what lens that doesn't look like I'm sticking a cannon out of the car? What would I cheat? I mean, this would be it. 420 millimeters at f/5.6 mounted on the D500 with batshit crazy high ISO low light performance. I mean, I can already take pictures of stuff that I can't see, and I'm not really light night blind either. It's like I can barely see it. It's like, that's okay. I just got done taking a picture at ISO 20,000. Handheld, 1 15th of a second. And I can freaking scan that barcode. It is so perfectly... And this before even applying noise reduction software. That's perfectly clear as day. That's ISO 20,000. Darker than a well digger's butthole at 3 o'clock in the morning at the bottom of a cave. Dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny, isn't it? So this is it. This is the ultimate tits. Um, I thought it might be, but I consulted with old Steve Perry first. Not because I don't know lenses, but because he'd been honking around the 300mm and the uh, 1.4 uh, TC14E, the Mark III. There's a Mark II, which came before this one. Um, there's a few minor differences between the Mark II and the Mark III. I know the Mark II is not compatible with this lens. At least I'm, I'm absolutely certain. I, I posted up a chart on Flickr so far as a teleconverter compatibility with what lenses. But uh, I've always been against teleconverters, except, as I've said many times over many years, unless it's a huge-ass prime lens. And that's what this is. It's not that huge. But, I mean, this is it. This is really what I've been wanting for a long time. It's also the reason why I wanted the 300mm f4. It's overpriced. It's a boutique lens. There's no denying that. This lens shouldn't cost $2,000. You know? But with that <laughs> $500 teleconverter, you know, not cheap either. You know, then it becomes something magical. I mean, this is a 5.6 lens too. But it's way over twice as heavy. You know, and you ain't, you, you, there's no way in hell you're going to let this, if you let this dangle off the front of your camera, it's going to destroy the camera. It's going to yank the joints right out of your fingers. So, this is not a viable option for standing on the sidelines of sports action, like a ball game, a racetrack, or, you know, shooting squirrels on crack as they flit through the trees. I love bird photography. I know, I know there's not really any money in it, but it's very relaxing to me. I mean... When I'm on vacation, I'll be on vacation in my other house here in March. I love going out to the wildlife refuge. One of my favorite ones is the J. Dean Darling Wildlife. It's very relaxing. It's nice and peaceful. It's very, very, very zen-like, right? You know, that's the word for you, zen, right? Um, so, that's it. With the TC-14E on here, this is the ultimate sports action Wildlife, lightweight, you know, strike them hard, strike them fast, reach out and touch somebody lens combo that uh, I can think of. Yep, 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 yep. And thanks to Steve Perry for his his uh, comment when I asked him a couple questions. Like, yo, Steve Perry, man, how's that uh, 
And the 1.7, by the way, and I consulted many people, I said I've got a lot of teleconverters, but none that would match up with the performance of this. The 1.7 teleconverters and no dice with this lens. It's just not fast enough, not good enough, a little bit too much light fall off. So I'm, I've always been that way, too. I have absolutely no teleconverter that's over a 1.4 anyway. I mean, I've known that for decades. But I consulted with Steve, the wildlife god photographer, Perry. I was like, yo, Steve. How's that TC-14E Mark III working for you? Yeah, so. Shout out to Steve Perry, the wildlife photographer. But I'm not going to use this primarily for bird photography. I mean, I'm not a wildlife photographer. However, I do find that relaxing. I mean, to use it for other things. And uh, I wanted a lightweight, reach out and touch somebody lens that would get the hell out there. And at 5.6, that's perfectly fine. That with the VR and the insane batshit crazy ISO performance of the D500? Yeah. Just like this. Yes, good stuff. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, drop a buck or two. Tell me, jump off a cliff, whatever makes you happy. Okay? It is kind of expensive, isn't it? This lens with that teleconverter. Let's take it off. I'll show it to you here. Mm -mm -mm. Someone's like, I want to see the teleconverter! How big is it? I know that's exactly what someone's saying right now. It's like, okay, you should never lay your camera down like that with the, you know, it's all right now, but just don't do that, even though I just did that. Ah! Uh, there we go. Oh, be careful taking it out there. And there we go. Seven elements. That's it. Seven elements and $500. That is the TC-14E Mark III 1.4X teleconverter from Nikon, made in hey! Japan. Yep, $500 for that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. Oh, wait, did, did you say that little thing was $500? Why, well, I did say that was $500. Mm-hmm. Buy me lots of biscuits and gravy for that kind of money. I could. Mm -hmm. Fried taters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money right there. I can buy me some collard greens and I could buy me a new horse. Mm -hmm. $500 is a lot of money, especially for something like that. Mm -hmm. Optics aren't cheap, are they? <laughs> that was my impression of Billy Bob Thornton from Sling Blade. I didn't like that movie, quite honestly. It is kind of funny, but I don't like that movie. Five hundred dollars for that, plus two thousand for the lens. That'd be two thousand. Oh, five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> Ba da ba da ba da 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 da